Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Leaders in Supply Chain podcast. This particular episode is reshare from a, a podcast that we did with Maria Villablanca, where we spoke together with Knut Alike, a partner of McKinsey and co-author of Source to Sold. Myself and Knut spoke about the book, about some of the principles in the book that make a great supply chain leader, that would help supply chain leaders make it to the CEO position, to the board, as well as we explained the chain model and how the five elements of the chain model help develop the leaders of the future in supply chain. Hope you find it valuable and enjoy the listen. I have to say that I'm really excited about this week's episode as I am joined by Knut Alike and Radu Palamariu, two of the most influential figures currently operating in supply chain. Now, if you're a supply chain veteran, then you will be very familiar with these two individuals. But for the uninitiated, here's a quick introduction. Knut is a partner at McKinsey & Company, and as part of the global supply chain leadership team, he advises companies on a variety of topics, including digital supply chains, risk and resilience, advanced analytics, and supply chain transformations. Radu is the managing director of Asia Pacific and Europe of Alcock Global and the global head of supply chain and logistics practice. He works with top management executives in the areas of manufacturing, logistics, transformation, supply chain management, and e-commerce. So I followed both their careers very closely, and I have to say that I was intrigued when I heard that they were joining forces to write a new book, From Source to Sold. It's a compendium which features a collection of leadership stories from some of the most successful operations and supply chain business leaders in the world. And naturally, I was keen to find out more, so I invited them on the show so that I could better understand what inspired them to write the book and to get their thoughts on the current state of the global supply chain as we enter the new year. I hope you enjoy. So last year, I had uh, an interview with a strategy coach, um, Richard Lloyd, and and that episode is out now. But the reason I'm kicking off the interview by referencing this episode is because during that conversation, he and I spoke about his love of the theater, right? And Knut, I know that you have a love for the arts as well. And in your case, it's music. So specifically jazz, right? Which I do love as well. Now, at that time, I asked Richard to explain a little bit what he thought the genre would be if I he would compare supply chain to uh, to um, to the theater, and he answered it would be tragedy. Mm, it's scary. So I guess what I want to do is I want to ask a similar question to you and think if you had to compare the current state of the supply chain, the global supply chain, to music, to jazz, what would it be? Would it be swing, bebop, blues? So it, it's a very interesting question. And uh, clearly we all had, uh, like three years ago when the pandemic started, we, we all kind of had this bluesy feeling. <laughs> Something is going wrong. Um, and then I would say that um, uh, the, the first uh, month or even years when, when people jumped on uh, uh, whatever, a nerve center situation room to solve problems, that felt a little bit like, like free jazz. Right? Like if you listen to free jazz, it feels like there is a lot of things going on, right? So people interact uh, on the spot, but you cannot really see the structure. And this is something that kind of evolved over the time. We are not yet there, but now it's kind of much more, much more organized, right? And the, and the, the fun is back. So uh, you could say that this is maybe turning into soul funk or so, um, more and more, but there's still some kind of, very um, advanced elements in there, so very free um, elements in there. Um, and it's also that it, it's very clear to stay with this picture that um, supply chains often do not really have an orchestrator, even uh, especially if it's kind of multi-companies, right? So they, they need to define how do we work together, how do we collaborate together, and that is kind of in jazz. You define, hey, this is the, the, the harmony, this is the structure, this is the way you improvise, and it works. You listen to each other, right? So uh, I, I like I like this picture to to describe the um, the state of the supply chain. I, I, when you were speaking, I could actually hear the music. You know, like I could actually hear uh, the freestyle going on. Uh, all right, so I, I want to talk to you now about your new book, which I was very lucky to get my hands on a copy, and I want to talk to you about. Um, because I, I was really very excited to read to get it. I was really excited about the way that you put it together, the questions you were trying to answer, and I really do think it's a must read for anyone that works in supply chain or wants to get into supply chain. So, Radu, I want to ask you, 
Uh, talk me through the inspiration behind writing the book and what, what's been the reaction so far. Yeah, I, I guess at some point last year, I don't know, maybe, maybe about 14 months, or maybe it was 2020. At the end of 2020, me and Knut was, were sharing. Interestingly enough, we had never met in person. So maybe that's an interesting fun fact, right? We wrote a book together without actually meeting in person up till the point that the book was almost released. So we met eventually before the book was released. But um, there you go. You can do it. And both of us were talking like, um, I think both of us are super passionate about supply chain, super passionate about the people in supply chain. And we were saying, if only there's a way to make them faster understand the role that they play to take pride in what they do and to tell the story of supply chain to the business and to the external world in a way that also the business, the CEO, the board, as well as the external world understands the supply chain is crucial. And that's where we were bouncing ideas and how can we do that? And I said, why don't we put together a collection of some of the best in business? May they be CEOs that came through the path of supply chain and made it to the CEO. May they be chief supply chain officers. May they be entrepreneurs that created multi-billion dollar businesses in logistics and supply chain. And ask them, what, you know, what's your story? What made you successful? What are some of the principles that hopefully can inspire others? And um, interestingly enough, even if we did start a very simple framework, we had the same questions that we asked everybody, more or less. And then we had a debrief session with each and every one of them. And, and across those hours of interviews and discussions, we crafted each chapter. It ended up being quite different stories because, hey, a story is personal and each person is different to the other one. So even if they did work all in supply chain and logistics, they came through different paths, different um, careers, different moves. And I think that's the, that's the overall linking it to your question. That's the overall good feedback that we get on the book, that it does provide a plethora, a menu list, a, a buffet of options, right? And, and everybody will take and will resonate with certain people more than others, like anything, right? But ultimately, if you read the 26 chapters, which are 26 uh, dialogues, and you get two, three, four, I don't know, 10 ideas, Amazing, right? And then maybe you can reread it at some other point and you might get some other ideas. I've done that with a few books in myself. I think then it's mission accomplished. And um, it's happening where, you know, we are perhaps not even, uh, sometimes we have to pinch ourselves uh, of how far it reached. I was um, I'm literally going next week to California and I just wrote, because I happen to be connected with him, never met him though, to the chief supply chain officer of Tesla. And, and I dropped him a note. I said, if you want to connect. And then he sent me back a picture of the book saying, what a coincidence, right? I'm reading the book, uh, great stuff. And yeah, sure, let's connect. And it has reached, you know, places far and, and, you know, far and beyond. We've gotten from childhood uh, friends to childhood friends of the people inside the book writing to them, to companies ordering it in bulk. Um, so I think it's, you know, obviously it's three months since it's been released. We are still uh, at the beginning. Books do take a while to spread, but it seems to be very well received. You know, one of the things that you and I have talked about before, Radu, isn't it, is about the supply chain having, I wouldn't say maybe a bad rap, but not enough of a rap. You know, one of the questions that you guys are trying to answer in the book is, why don't we see uh, more supply chain leaders becoming CEOs, right? I think the statistic that you give is something around 13% uh, of CEOs of Fortune 200 companies have a background in supply chain. Now, does, do you think that comes down to the fact that supply chain leaders are perhaps maybe guilty of concentrating on numbers, but, uh, you know, a CEO has to successfully communicate a vision, right? And um, how do we go about increasing the number of supply chain leaders that are become CEOs? And how do we prepare supply chain leaders to actually take that path? So, in, in, indeed, um, the, the, the 13% is on one hand side worrying, um, on the other hand, it's also what we expect and that's why, why we, why we did this book, right? So we wanted to really kind of go to the essence and understand, hey, um, what is, what is the pattern, so to say? And as Radu said, there is, there is no, no one single pattern. So it's not like kind of, hey, you do A, B, C, D, and then everything is fine, right? So people are really different. Um, but there, there is clearly some, some commonalities. So what is very, very important and we, we, and I tested this idea with um, with a group of roughly um, 25 chief supply chain officers that, that we from McKinsey um, kind of gather um, two times per year 
and then kind of talk about um, um, developments and cool stuff. So we basically tested the idea of the book and, and everyone was like, yes, that's exactly what we need. We need to kind of improve our communication, right? So we need to be able to tell the story of supply chain that people understand. And we had one of the participants, he is the um, a global head of supply chain of Sanofi. He basically told the story that, hey, look, I, I grew up in sales and then I moved over to supply chain. And then the salespeople asked me to explain, what do you do in supply chain? Because we never understand, right? These supply chain people, they always feel nerdy, very much number driven and so on. And he said, look, um, I took a couple of pictures like the ever given um, stuck in the Suez Canal. And based on these pictures, I explained what is the challenge of supply chain and, um, and what we work on. And the people said, that, hey, now we understand. Simple words, very clear story, straightforward. Right? So this is something where um, a lot of supply chain people kind of probably also us. Um, think that ah, that's that's too too naive, that's too basic, right? But so communication is um, is, is super important. Other than that, it's interesting if you look through the um, the elements that people in supply chain bring. So they kind of they know end to end, which is super important for um, for a board member. Um, they know um, how to collaborate internally, externally. Super important. They think scenarios, right? They understand, uh, hopefully, um, the, the, the trade-off, right? So there's a lot of discussions always like, hey, we need to increase our service level. Yes, but for that, we need to probably either increase our inventory or be more agile. No, we cannot do that. So these trade-off discussions, supply chain people understand. So with this, they kind of they bring the right um, to be CEO. So now how do we increase um, kind of capability building, teaching, talking to them, and um, and uh, continue to convince that hey you are on the right path um, you you can do that yeah I'll uh, um, I'll build slightly on it so throughout the book we could not identify do A B C D step but we did identify five common traits characteristic principles call it principles which we basically summarized on the chain model. So chain model, each letter stands for something. C stands for collaboration, H for holistic, A for adaptable, I for influential, and N for narrative. So across the interviews, these five came up again and again and again, right? And actually, we are also developing a full-fledged soft skills and leadership development program around it. So I think to build upon what Knut said, I think it's an element of one supply chain professionals by design, they tend to come from engineering, technical, data, analytics type of formation. Uh, now we start to see also bachelors and masters in supply chain more and more, which is great, right? But okay, historically, there wasn't even this, right? So, I mean, logistics, it happened a long, long time ago. Supply chain management happened since 83, 84, I think the term was invented. So it's fairly new. So they tend to come with this type of background. And then th therein lies the fallacy a little bit, right? Because they get in, in love with their data. Um, and when you go to a CEO, when you go to the board, they, don't, they couldn't care less necessarily about the data. They care about, yeah, but how is this impacting my business? How is this generating more business, generating more customer, uh, better customer experience, lowering my costs? I mean, very basic fundamentals of how you run a business. They don't care about truck utilization, inventory reduction, transit times. I mean, who, who cares about that in itself? They, it doesn't matter. Only the supply chain nerds, only the supply chain nerds, which is what you're exactly. saying. So yeah. is, is that element of first realize, right? So, I mean, you got You don't know what, if you don't know what you don't know, I mean, realize that you got to speak the language of the business. Secondly, I mean, to your question, how do you get then more people to the CEO? Now, I do want to first put in a caveat there that a lot of people, I mean, not everybody needs to be CEO, right? So obviously not all supply chain people need to be CEO, just like not every finance needs to be CEO and all of that. But I think the aspect the, from the chain model, the part which has a lot to help them the most is that part with the N, which is I and N. I is how do you influence, but N is even more powerful. The narrative is how do you build a story? How do you build your purpose, if you want, story and vision in the organization to tell that story that the board and the CEO buys into it, right? And sees the value that you bring. Because ultimately, if you're not gonna, if you're not be, you're not able to do that, you can't get your team, one, to achieve the results. And two, 
CEOs are put there because the board is confident that they can bring more value, right? They can bring more sales, they can bring the business forward. So you got to have a very strong communication, narrative, storytelling ability to be able to do that. Of course, on top of good stuff, you need to show results. And I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, just being a very good communicator is enough. Um, so I think these two things, right? So one, the awareness of supply chain. Look, if you want to go to the business, you really got to understand what the, speak the business language. And secondly, everybody, not not everybody will be Barack Obama, but everybody can learn to be a good speaker, a good communicator, a good influencer, a good, you know, maybe the traits of salesperson, right? To share how do they do, what do they do, and how does it help the organization? And I think that fundamentally, with relationships, of course, is much more complex than this, will increase that uh, percentage of CEOs from supply chain. I think you're absolutely right about apps of everything, and we've we've talked about this for so long. I mean, we we could probably all classify ourselves as supply chain nerds. You know, we get excited about talking, you know, about some of these statistics. But I've got to say, Knut, that what you said has really shocked me, which is the fact that supply chain leaders in today's age are still having to try to explain within their own organizations, a what is supply chain. And B, what is the value of supply chain? I think we can all agree, and I think a lot of business leaders can agree, that businesses live or die by the strength of their supply chain, right? They live or die. That's how important the supply chain function is today. So clearly, there's a very big gap between that reality and actually the importance that the supply chain function uh, the, the gravitas, the, the the role that it has within the organizational structure in communicating effectively how valuable it is. So to your point, Radu, the narrative, the influence is something that has got, to, we've got to do a better job there of communicating that. Because again, going back to my earlier statement, we all believe that a company will live or die by the strength of the supply chain. Yes or no? I'll just quickly jump because Knut is also a professor, so I'll let him. So, you know, in school, I think all of us, you would have a subject and it can be a super dry subject. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I wasn't a big fan of school, so I, I will struggle to give my own examples. I liked history at some point because the professor of history was really interesting. Like, I mean, I, if you ask me now, I have no idea what I was thinking <laughs> because it's not much use to study history. I mean, if you ask me today, but because the professor was super interesting, I went to the Olympics. I mean, there's some regional Olympics. I really got into it, right? Because I, I liked it. Now, how does that link to supply chain? And, and I don't think that CEOs and board now after the last two years, I think it's for most of them is clear. Supply chain is key. However, the communicator, the the flag bearer of supply chain is just as key. Let me give you an example, just like, you know, my history teacher. This gentleman, I will not name, he's the head of supply chain for a company. Actually, I think that, you know, I mean, I've known him for a while. I thought that he's a pretty good communicator. And he was telling me, look, Radu, now with all this crisis, they were calling me in the board meeting. And, you know, for the first time, they were actually asking for my opinion. And I can tell you a specific instance where I had an out-of-body experience presenting to the board. And I just find myself throwing all these terms to them. Oh, we need to store inventory in China because da da da, and then bonded warehouse and da da da. And I could see in their eyes that I, they were completely lost, had no idea what am I talking about, and they were, I was losing them. And at the same time, Radu, I could not stop myself <laughs> from going on the same tune and singing the same tune. And he said, "Look, truth be told, in a few weeks they stopped asking me to come to the board." So I think therein lies the point, you know. Not that the function is not important, but how do you communicate that? The soft skills are the hard skills. How do you come across? How do you speak how important it is and, and use the words that business will understand? That's the crux of it. I, th I think you're absolutely right there. Um, I, I think also the role of the supply chain leader has evolved significantly in the last couple of years. It almost as though the supply chain leader also has to be very much aware of geopolitics, of very much aware of, uh, you know, regulations, really a economist to some degree, as well as business leader, understanding the general value that a supply chain has to their leader. Um, so I, I think that you need to, um, you know, what, what is your view on that, Knut? What is your view on the fact that supply chain leaders have had to evolve significantly and the evolution is not ending? 
So if if we if we look back the the, the last two years, three years, as as Ado said, there, there was clearly, um, I would say, boards and and companies started to understand that there is something that they need to take care of. So blockchain is always a function that was working in the background, right? So um, hey, it's kind of a well-oiled machine. Um, uh, there were some small complaints, but every, everything fine. Right? And now we had this disruption where everything was stopped, bottlenecks, semiconductor crisis, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this now kind of fueled a discussion in the board, which I found interesting. If you, if you look into investor briefings of companies, that the term supply chain was never used before. Uh, I would not say never, but um, not very often. And now kind of a lot of people are talking about the like that. One of my clients who, who, who we helped to, uh, to navigate the crisis, the CEO kind of started to talk every quarter about supply chain. And for him, this was the story, hey, because we have our supply chain under control, we gain market share. And this is something where, where supply chain leaders um, need to kind of pick up, right? So listen also to your CEOs, how they explain supply chain. But before you need to brief them, right? So you need to kind of first come with the stories that they understand what's going on. Even politicians are now uh, talking about supply chain, um, and um, and this means something, right? So um, very important to to come with the story, and the story must be end to end. The story must be clear, uh, and the story must not have um, uh, all of these kind of three letter acronyms that we all of us love so much. Um, and then and then it starts to uh, when it starts to work. I think there's probably quite a lot to be done here about explaining business value and shareholder value. And uh, and this is probably why you see a lot of CFOs becoming CEOs, because they get the intrinsic value that is needed in order to drive business forward. So, um, right, I, you know, while the purpose of your book was to uncover answers for, you know, accomplished supply chain leaders, it's also, I'm sure this experience has taught you guys uh, about yourselves as individuals and what, if anything... Uh, did you all learn yourself about the way you view supply chain and any other long-held beliefs that you had? Um, let me start with you, Radu. I, I myself have, you know, I have kind of uh, stumbled across this, right? I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't study supply chain. I just ended up doing at some point uh, executive search and headhunting in supply chain. And I just fell in love with the people. And just because I'm curious, I, I got to learn more and more and, you know, um, the more I learned, the more I knew I didn't know. And, and that, that wasn't that unfamiliar, actually, to most people. Maybe that was a fairly surprise to me, right? I mean, it wasn't that of a different story to most people in the book. Like, they, there wasn't a lot of them that set out to be supply chain experts. Barely. I mean, I, I don't actually remember any of them, if I'm to be honest. I, I, you know what? I, I can validate you even further. You know, I interviewed tons of people, you know, I'm 160 episodes into this and I asked that question pretty much to everyone. And my views from what I get is everyone fell into supply chain. Most people fall into supply chain. Yeah. So I think that's, that's a cool thing. I mean, I, I also had this discussion with somebody that read the book. I mean, it was what a story that was. I mean, I saw her publish that. I saw her post the book on uh, LinkedIn and then um, I happened to be in, in Singapore and she said she had to borrow the book. She had to borrow the book, yeah, because she could, she would, was sold out on Amazon. And I'm like, okay, we've done, we have had some issues. You know, paper was a problem to even print the book. Uh, we've had some supply chain issues about printing the book. But I, I mean, I, to me, it was how the hell did Amazon run out of books? I don't know. Don't they do print on demand? Anyways, the thing is, she didn't, she uh, borrowed it. So I said, okay, let, let's meet up and let me give you a copy. I mean, you made my day by, you know, you, made me and Knut feel really proud and then you know here's a book and I asked her so you read it now what was your key takeaway right and she goes look I am um she was a food scientist she came from food chemistry that kind of stuff right and and she ended up doing supply chain and she said I read all these stories and I realized I had a limiting belief that okay because I'm not trained in supply chain per se I'm not trained I mean there's got to be some sort of special diploma education that makes me more competent and i realized reading all these people there isn't such a thing and most of them like you know I mean, all of them came and in, in various backgrounds and eventually made it and it's a compilation of different things of course and it's a lot of common sense in it and she said look i felt very comfortable that yeah i think i have everything that i need to be a very successful supply chain and i'm going for it right so 
I think it was that reinforcement, maybe that, that was the most uh, for me. And of course, I mean, there's each person uh, has such cool stories, right? I mean, for me, I, I, I love people. I'm a high on extrovert, right? So, I mean, also this, it, this is not linked to supply chain per se, but I do think that the um, percentage of really cool people in supply chain, I'm completely biased here, but uh, is much higher. Let me say, what, how do I define cool? Down to earth pragmatic, you know, I mean, if you go into finance, I mean, I'm going to, if you go into banking as a sector, I'm going to bet mouth banking for a second. I find them to be a lot more stiff and, uh, you know, play facade and okay, fair enough. Maybe it's the nature of the beast. You know, you talk to the investors, you don't want to, <laughs> to say everything and you play it politically correct. Right. I, I personally, I don't like that style. I think in supply chain, you get people that are very direct open let's get stuff done let's make things happen so for me all these personal stories are really relatable and i think each and every interview you know is, is special so that that was my key personal takeaway and what about you knut um so, so look I, I would say that um, a, a lot of um what um, what i believe was was proven right uh was supported by by, by the interviews and if i if i kind of just look back into kind of the last 25 years i do supply chain it's it's really that kind of in the early days um, you you kind of ask hey why do other people not understand right so kind of love this nerdy stuff love the numbers and why do, do they not understand and then you get to the point where you then kind of talk to more kind of um, um, uh, board people and then you realize that hmm, maybe it's not on them maybe it's on you right um, and I tested the idea of um, um, with uh, leaders of supply chain like ten years ago I asked them do, do you in your budget planning, do you put aside some budget for supply chain communication or supply chain marketing? And everyone was like, no, but it's a good idea. <laughs> and, and this kind of started also then kind of the thing, hey, how, how can we uh, illustrate, how can we communicate better? So I would say that a, a lot of um, the, um, the beliefs um, uh, were, were proven in the, in the interviews. What, what I found um, um, amazing is um, in, in one of the interviews, we, um, so we talked to, to, to Jim Rowan, the, the now CEO of, um, of Volvo and back then um, uh, of, of Dyson. And he said, look, um, the world is what the world is, right? Because kind of we always like to complain about like uh, the sales guys are so bad, the finance guys are so bad and so on. No, this is kind of the environment you work in. And if there is uh, the forecast security is what it is, and we need to make sure that we set up our system, our supply chain, our network, whatever, to um, use this crappy stuff and still make the best out of it, right? So um, very much in, in terms of, hey, um, clearly long-term you need to improve, but hey, that's what it is. Take it and do the best for the consumer, do the best for the customer. Right? That, um, that I found um, uh, very inspiring because that kind of, for me, it also told me that, hey, uh, don't complain about the others, right? Um, just take it and uh, do whatever you can to, um, to improve. Um, and then kind of the, what Radu also said, um, it also proved this, um, I would say, this curiosity for, for new stuff. Um, because all people we interviewed said that, hey, I'm a lifelong learner. And it's not that I kind of um, ask my HR department to send me 10 courses. It's I'm curious. I go to a conference, I read books, uh, I, I read blog posts, I listen to podcasts. And it felt like every one of these um, were this were similar, right? So like Ivanka Janssen from, from Philips, she told us that she, she took a Python course. And I was like, <laughs> why do you take a Python course? Because she wants to understand how all of these young geeks um, uh, work and think, right? Um, when I heard this, <laughs> the next vacation, um, I did the same, right? So <laughs> I started also to go back to my programming skills. And um, it, it, it's, just, it's just kind of very rewarding. Right? So I appreciate that there have been a lot of talk about books today namely your book. Um, but I've got a new recurring feature that I'm going to be doing here on Transform Talks, which is Maria's Book Club. So I'm going to ask my guests to come prepared with a book that has had an impact on their life. I mean, apart from uh, the one that you've just written, uh, what book would you say falls into that category, Radu? The most recent one that really shifted a few of my <laughs> perceptions. Um, no rules rules so the title is no rules rules it's written by the netflix ceo together with the professor i forget now where 
And um, yeah, it, it basically just fundamentally shifted a few of my beliefs about how do you run a business? How do you take action fast and swift? Don't wait for, <laughs> uh, for too long. And, and yeah, I just found a lot of gems in, uh, in there that were relevant uh, for us, for how we do business in Elko Global. So that's the, that's the first title that would come to my mind right now. I love that. I love sh the shifts in paradigms. I love when something shifts the way that I think. What about you, Knut? I must say that there is um, the, the Lord of the Rings, um, uh, Tolkien, is, is one of those books where um, I, um, I tried it when I was too young, right? So at the age of 11 or so, and I was like, oh, that's so long and so on. And then I tried it again when I was like 15 or so. And it felt like I went through all the three books in one weekend, right? So I, I could not stop because the way he describes and he, he kind of um, um, paints all of these um, um, these countries, the people, the characters and so on, it's just so amazing. And um, to go back to supply chain, we can learn a lot from all this, right? That's one. And another one that I found super interesting uh, and worrying is Bl uh, Blackout by by uh, Mark um, um, It's a it's a novel where basically um, the, um, the energy system is shut down more and more and more. And he basically kind of describes, um, and it's a thriller, right? So he describes what happens if kind of more and more of the energy system is just not working, right? Because it was hacked. And that was super frightening, but it's also, it triggers um, a, a lot of thoughts, right? So kind of everything is connected to our, um, to our discussion also on what can AI bring Right, and what are the risks of AI? So, very, very, very interesting. I think if we were to compare supply chain to Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, that could be a whole separate episode entirely because of all the different worlds and all the different challenges. Right. Um, I want to thank you both for being on the show. I want to thank you for this and for writing that book, which is, uh, as I said, a must read for anyone in supply chain. So, thank you for being on Transform Talks. Thanks a lot for having us. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for listening to our podcast. If you liked what you heard, be sure to go to www.elcotglobal.com and click the podcast button for all the show notes of the interview. Also, subscribe to our mailing list to get our latest updates first. If you're listening through a streaming platform like iTunes, Spotify or Stitcher, we would appreciate a kind review. Five star works best to keep us going and our production team happy. And of course, share it with your friends. I'm most active on LinkedIn, so do feel free to follow me. And if you have any suggestions on what, what to do and who to invite next, don't hesitate to drop me a note. And if you're looking to hire top executives in supply chain or transform your business, of course, contact us as well to find out how we can help.